Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me at the start of a new campaign in Kaiser Redux in which we're playing as New York City. The city that never sleeps, as some would say. But it now burns, sitting at the end of the mighty Hudson like a wondrous pearl washed towards the sea. New York was once the tar largest city in the now dying Union, and perhaps even the greatest metropolis on earth. First settled by the Dutch in 1624, the once sleepy and unassuming coastal colony that was New Amsterdam would evolve over time to s turn into the bustling, ever awake city center of global economics and culture that it is today, doing the impossible to become the urban crown jewel of the old US. However, the golden era that brought New York City to this breaking breathtaking pinnacle, has been abruptly cut short and now the infamous Big Apple burns much like the rest of the dying Union. The outbreak of the Second American Civil War spelled doom for the American nation and its people, with families and friends torn apart as political tensions sparked factionalism and violence. These divisions were seen across a faltering nation, from the Pacific Coast to the Deep South, to even outlying un unincorporated territories and beyond. However, due to the close quarters nature and sheer density of the Northeast metropolis, these tensions and acts of violence and political expression were far more cutthroat and intense here. And the Big Apple, of course, and perhaps anywhere else in the nation, being the most densely populated region in the nation while simultaneously staying as a melting pot of diverse cultures and viewpoints, New York City becomes or became a bloody microcosm of the wider civil war, given its location and key importance. The syndicalists and federalist factions both claim the city as their own, with this being evident in the streets as separate borders and barricades rose in this new urban hack. Neighbor fought neighbor, and brothers slaughtered brothers, the cosmopolitan nature of the metropolis turned against it. Socialist unions and militias from the city's vast industrial sectors took up arms took up arms against New York Police Department, as the various crime syndicates feasted on the chaos. The Brooklyn shipyards and local naval bases developed into infighting as Federalists and Syndicalists as lying sailors turned on each other in order to secure the vast fleet's dry dock for repairs and refits. Wall Street devolved into bloodshed as Socialists made a run on the financial sector only to be met by the guns of the NYPD and Tamami, Tamani, Tamani Hall forces who had taken to the rooftops to defend their assets, makeshift fortresses and blockades littered the streets and alleys with Broadway, doing into a no man's land littered with, with shell creators, and bodies only disturbed by the shred of cannons or the screams of scavengers and looters caught in the machine gun fire of a passing patroller and camped hardpoint. The city that never slept was constantly awake by the blood curling horrors and cacophony of the endless war, but somehow the city held firm. Well, it was once a glistening example of the American dream is now, a blood soaked ruin, and at the center of all it all is Mayor. Fiorello La Guardia, who has rallied the bulk of the city's non radicals under a temporary banner for peace and for preservation of the New York City. Elected in 33, La Guardia was the first Italian mayor of the city and the first mayor in decades to be freed from the corrupt Democrat political machine known as Tamani Hall. With the city now independent, having fended off the selfish desires of both Chicago and Washington, Mayor La Guardia has become the main executive of the city and to many its final protector. Standing in the middle of in, uh, fighting socialist police officers, mobsters, Democrats, opportunists, federalist socialist police officers, Oh, and more, huh? Few envy Lagarde's position, but despite an upcoming uh, emergency election, his determination to save his city has not been wavered. Navigating the minefield, both political and literal, of his war torn city, it's up to Lagarde to attempt to bring peace to his heck zone. However, with the numerous forces circling Little Flower, as he is sometimes called, Lagarde must act fast, lest he lose his position to a more power hungry forces. And we must act quickly to stop the raw from declaring our glorious Big Apple. Because there's a big old lots of different paths you could take. Known by many names, such as the city that never sleeps, or simply the city, the most curious and vibrant of all names for New York is a Big Apple. New York, or as is more commonly known as New York City, to differentiate it from the state it has now succeeded from, now drifts towards its new destiny alone and untethered. Many maneuvering between cynicals and federalist forces, New York City has skinned by, and now stands as an independent city state on the brink of internal collapse, with gangs and looters rioting in the streets of the leftist call or left his cells fight local National Guard regiments. The crumbling coalition that is the fusion of the incumbent mayor, Fiorello de la Guardia, must now attempt to steer his rickety ship towards safe harbor, lest the whole city sink beneath the waves of radicalism and chaos, the sudden election. With this coalition that is a fusion party crumbling around, and Mayor Lagardi and his administration had called for sudden snap elections in order to reassure the people of New York City that he is devoted to the democratic process, and willing to do what is best for the city at large. However, with his party falling apart, Lagardi and his Republican supporters now face staunch competition, and the easy win he so desperately expected is but a distant delusion. It is sure to be a close race, as the future of America's largest city and the nearly 8 million souls within it dangles in the balance. The political stage of New York City. It is as hectic and cutthroat as it is diverse, with the political groups representing peoples of all backgrounds, both socioeconomic and ethnic. However, on the stage of stages, that is the Big Apple, it takes far more than a snappy message and a boisterous voice to get far, and the city that never sleeps, the giants of metropol metrop uh, metropolitan politics duke it out in a non-stop brawl to control America's largest city. Currently lording over the Big Apple as the 99th elected mayor in the city's history is beloved and divisive Furiello H. Lagardia, the first Italian mayor in the city's history. 
Winning first is seated back in 33, Lagardia has defended his position from the likes of Tamami and his Ma, but with the current chaotic situation America now faces, his troubles have evolved into far more gruesome foes, running on his fusion party ticket to appease the disillusioned masses. This tactic may have worked for a few years ago, but now that with the political arena of the city fractured, his unity approach may not cut it. With he and his base of Republican devotees and other liberal supporters defending the Democratic mandate, the wolves circle them without cessation. Or cessation. The most well-established political enemy to Mayor Lagardia is his old rivals in Tamani Hall. But after recent scandals and crushing loss to Lagardia in 33, they've been severely weakened and disgraced, officially called the Society of St. Tamami. Hall is a political machine devoted to the Democratic Party running on institutionalized graft and corruption and with a recently ruined reputation. They'll likely need to seek alternative avenues to power. However, Hall is far from his only opponent. Splitting off from the fusion ticket, the radical progressive Orson Welles seeks to r rally laborers and progressive minor Republicans as well as moderate socialists in order to secure a social democratic New York. However, he's not alone in championing the leftist cause for his old friend and fellow celebrity, John Steinbeck, has risen to rally the true left of New York City in order to usher in a moderate and peaceful socialist revolution while backed by the combined syndicates of Chicago and the Third International, as well as the various syndicalists and other radical leftist cells throughout the city. Opposing them on the opposite end of the ideological spectrum is Fred Trump and his Reform Party. Along with the old Democratic Party of the South, the Reform Party is a splinter group of Tammany Hall, with Fred Trump and his supporters abandoning a Democratic Party that feels lost its way to Catholic meddling and far too liberal capitalism. Instead, his free market approach seeks to bring prosperity to the city. Despite allegations and rumors abound of his racial views and ties with the KKK and ODP leadership, outside of the main group of politicians and firebrands, but still equally opposed to seize a big apple for themselves are the two diametrically opposed and impossibly intertwined forces of the New York Police Department, and the faceless, amorphous specter of organized crime, with Police Chief Louis Valentine trying to keep the peace as he beats back radicals and mobsters alike. The commission led by Lucky, Lucky Luciano, Meyer, Lansky, and Bugsy Siegel seeks to take the city that never sleeps for themselves. While this wild stage set, and with the emergency election called for by the LaGuardia administration now looming, New York City's false dangles or fate dangles in the air as the curtains comes up and this chaotic show must go on. A harder crowd than on Broadway. We have the national spirits. Tamanis, Tamanis, Tamamis, Tamamis. It must be Tamami. I apologize for saying his name wrong. Halls, cross of stuff. Organized crime, which sucks. A burning Big Apple, really sucks. As well as the might of the NPD, which is not bad. Not bad. NYPD, I guess I should say, but still. Cool. Yeah, Civil War is raging on. Apparently, with every single faction, you can re unify America, but you don't get any unique focus tree, so... We'll see about that. We'll see what happens. No guarantees. We'll probably need to get Ambusher and Logistics Wizard, but that's pretty normal. Big Apple Breaks Free, St. Valentine's Day Massacre. People all across the Big Apple have their normal St. Valentine's Day plans abruptly turned sour due to the aftermath of this morning news. At 10.30 a.m., seven men were violently and mercilessly gunned down in a garage in South Brooklyn, only to be found by police later that day. According to the eyewitness accounts, four men, two dressed as NYPD officers and two in fancy suits, took the victims into the garage before lining them up facing the wall and getting them down with Thompson machine guns, or Brooklyn typewriters, as they're frequently called, called in the five boroughs. The gunmen, all still unidentified by the NYPD, all of them fled in different directions well before the police showed up on the scene, making it appear as though the gunmen walked, walked free and anonymous. But, despite there being no evidence, all suspect in the city that the man behind these attacks was Charlie Lucky Luciano, head of the Luciano crime family and leading figure within the commission. Mostly that the gunmen belonged to their enforcer arm, Murder, Inc., especially with the victims all being high-profile members of his rival outfits, including the infamous Big Bill Dwyer, one of the main figures of the Irish Mafia in New York City, one of Luciano's biggest obstacles securing his hold on the city. Though there's no evidence to bring Luciano or any, any of his men in, Police Chief Louis J. Valentine has warned that the true culprits will be caught, but that will not change the St. Valentine's Day Massacre will live in infamy as one of the most brazen public executions in American criminal history. We must remain vigilant lest organized crime consume our fine city. The streets run red with blood on this crimson-clad holiday. Now, as you can tell on the thumbnail, we've chosen it a place to go. The mob, see, the mob would be a lot, a lot of fun. Little rule from Little Italy would be really cool. Which I've been to Little Italy, Italy, at least Little Italy in Boston, not New York City. Mob's accountant and the rise of Murder Inc. I, oh, Gangster's Paradise. Oh, that sounds like so much fun. NYPD Save the City. I think we'll just go, go with Re elect LaGuardia. Let's see what happens. Facing off political opponents hungry to take his place while also seeking to maintain stability in his beloved Big Apple, Fiorello H. Lagardia and his fusion ticket based around the Republican Party have eked out a victory in the recent snap elections. As such, Lagardia, the little flower and mayor of 99, has been re-elected as mayor of New York City. Under his continued administration, New York City will strive towards becoming a fair, free, and equal liberal capitalist paradise that it was always meant to be, as Lagardia seeks to use his new deal to transform the Big Apple into a shining city upon the hill. So, I apologize if you, don't, if, if you wanted us to go like with Steinbeck or Wells or even Trump. Which I definitely will do Trump eventually, and Steinbeck. Even though I'm gonna do all these paths eventually. I probably will. But pro Irish politics. Work with the wasps, huh? Palm of our hands. A puppet of municipal democracy, huh? Don Republic. Under the Tamami Tiger. Tamami. 
Too many. Too many. Too many. So do I care for you? There's always protecting New York City, of course. Um, City that never sleeps is pretty good. City under siege. Actually, a necessary draft, yeah. Uh, planes, dockyards. Snap elections of the air for New York City. Oh! Well, he wins immediately. Huh. Well, the Big Apple now free from war and ca uh, not capitalists, but syndicalists and federalists that nearly destroyed our metropolis. <clears throat> we too have become free of the only unifying force keeping the mayor of the guardians and gorge future party ticket together. With the writing the wall, no city in desperate need of a resolve or perhaps even a new direction, the Lagarde administration called for new snap elections, a first for the city. And the chaos has surrounded the hasty organization of this new election. Four men have risen to become prime contenders for the new mayor of Ma New York City. Defending his mandate and his administration sends the Lagarde, the incumbent Republican mayor touted by many as the man who saved New York. Despite setbacks and the near complete collapse of his fusion party coalition, Lagarde is still in a strong position to win re election, though it is far from as sure as it was just a few short months ago. Despite the chaos, he still seeks to institute the New Deal, a progressive Sokusu economic plan partially developed years prior to his during his time working with the late Franklin Roosevelt to boost and equalize the economy while safeguarding true American democracy within the city. His prime opponent buying for the same support base is Orson Welles and his Labour Party, largely seen as a good syndicalist despite several attempts to distance himself from syndicalism and revolutionary leftist ideas. Welles is running on a campaign of egalitarian social justice, progressive social democracy, and patronage of the vibrant New York cultural scene in a fair social capitalist system further to the left of the Welles. Steinbeck. Let's also throw in his hat in the ring. Having united the remaining syndicalists and socialist cells within the city limits, as well as those leftists dis disillusioned. By Wells' moderate and compromised approach, Steinbeck seeks to bring about a peaceful socialist reformation while dodging claims that he's a spire's agent of the CSA or Third International. These accusations, however, not stop his message of equal equality and economic redistribution from resonating within the city's extensive urban poor, giving him a strong chance to swipe the election from behind. Finally, there's Fred Trump. A real estate magnate, who's become the figurehead for the big business and free market capitalist interests within the Big Apple and with his Reform Party. A splinter from Tammany Hall, with ties to the old Democratic Party down south, he wants to turn the city that never sleeps into a modern Venice where government and business go hand in hand to encourage the prosperity of the state. However, his track record with dodging taxes and equality laws while funding and supporting the ODP and the Triple K have made him or many wary of his promises, but they can do little to stop his powerful backers and torrent of support he has from former Hall supporters. Well, these candidates all poised to lead the city at this turbulent and crucial crossroads, it's it is truly anyone's race as the election draws near. Apologies for just speaking really fast. I just I speak fast anyways. Little flower. Democratic unity. Stability factory output. New York. New deal. Building off the work of his past allies while incorporating his own ideas, Mayor Lagarde has announced the creation of his new social program, Dead the New Deal. Sitting around the three hours of relief for the unemployed poor and those whose lives have been destroyed by the war, recovery of the economy to pre-level collapse or pre-collapse levels, <clears throat> and reforms of the financial system along liberal and egalitarian lines in order to prevent such a disaster from happening again. This new deal shall become the foundation of the Guard's agent agenda, as the mayor seeks to bring prosperity, liberty, and equality to New York City. Anything else we can do here? No, not too much. Command commandeering civilian trains. Uh, harsh anti-corruption measures. Uh, that's not bad. You get more weekly stability gain, which is actually pretty good. Sweep him aside. Remove him. We'll get more daily political power, which would be pretty nice. Stuff's not bad either. Harsh anti corruption measures. Lagarde built his reputation around a staunch stance against corruption, grafting, racketeering, and other forms of parasitic selfishness that afflict the Big Apple. And then, with his mandates once again security, has moved to make good on his promise. An anti occupation wave will sweep the city, wash away sin, hedonistic excess, and a purifying wave of law and order. Crime and corruption have no place in our New York, and Lagarde is a hero we need to champion the extermination efforts. Uh, Hall denounces us. Despite the mayoral elections ending not but a short time ago, it seems not everyone in the city is accepting the results. The Society of St. Tammany, by far the largest political machine in New York, has turned on us openly, launching a public smear campaign against the mayor and his administration. Newsboys on street corners distribute pamphlets telling slanderous lies, flyers are showing up on telephone poles, lampooning the government over the city's problems, and the billboards in support of Tammany Tiger have gone up across the city. All the while, Tammany politicians within the city have unleashed a full broadside against the mayor's office. Unless something is done to finally quell the Tiger, the current administration may not survive long. Mess with Tiger, you get the claws and shining star of the military. With the outbreak of violence on the American continent, many people find themselves giving up on the old dreams to join the brave men and women who are serving their home states. The most peculiar are those who are managing to keep their old dreams while at the same time serving the people. One such person would be Francis Albert Sinatra. Sinatra had, prior to the outbreak of the Civil War, been a rising star in the music scene with many of his sw swinging tunes providing distraction and comfort for many who were struggling with the very worst of the Great Depression shortly after the New York refused to follow the rest of the country into the war. The 23-year-old music star enlisted in the National Guard. Garnering much attention from the socialites of the city. Furthermore, he has volunteered his talents as a singer and offered the officer staff 
how sad it to accept and hope that hearing such a famous figure singing for them alone will boost the morale of his men. Find something worth listening to. Francis Sinatra, huh? No, there he is. Of course he'd be politically connected. Of course. But whatever. New York, New Deal. Can't really do much, but we have a pretty good amount of vampire, honestly. Almost 8 million people here. And that's actually pretty good. Well, it goes well to Command Center. The Prodigal Son. Once well, a political ally and friend of Fiorello LaGuardia, Franklin Delano Roosevelt died years ago to the sickness that ravaged his body and left him partially disabled, but his legacy lives on. His sons, including RFD, FDR Jr., were partially were trusted to care of close friend family Oswald Mosley in order to learn their lessons that their father had failed to teach him while their mother fell in with socialist Quakers in New England with their sister, Anna. Under Mosley's guidance, the young Roosevelt was raised into a man introduced further into the world of politics. But without his father's tempering, tempering guidance, the young Roosevelt fell headfirst into the growing Maximus movement. Now, a man, FDR Jr., has returned to New York City with his brothers in hopes of kickstarting his own political career in the Big Apple on a Maximus platform, tweaked to American realities. Those that do have a big a red deal has larger fallen on deaf ears. That has not stopped his firebrand from attempting to spread his message from a stop his soapbox in Manhattan. Perhaps something will come something will come of his efforts eventually. I hope he doesn't catch what his dad had. Federalism had long been the system tied oh my god. Uh, uh, tied to American democracy and politics, but with a newly implemented reality, this legacy has been called into question. Though our metropolis is massive and sprawling like no other city in the dying union, it's still just one city. And many feel that such a small state needs centralizing governments as opposed to federalism. However, the nature of the five boroughs, the administrative blocks of the city made up of the Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, Staten Island, may just be the perfect underlying structure to support a reformed federal system. Supporters of the plan will divide the city into five states, represented by each borough, while Long Island will be divided along its existing country lines, blurring the lines between states, borough, counties, to create a unique federalist and decentralized system all under the mayor's office of New York City. What shall the future of New York City's administrative and political system be? Either one city state or one New, New York whole un, undivided under a centralized mayor's office, or one city nation composed of five boroughs and counties of Long Island that function as a microcosm of the wider failed union. States are as American as up apply, creating a new federal system within the city. Our city, though large, is no need for such divisions. New York City shall be built around a unitary system. We'll go with that one. The Great Crime Wave of 1937. As a newly independent, New York settles into the harsh realities of being a free city-state, along with all the benefits and dangers such a existence provides. Our first major post-independence obstacles reared its ugly head. Although the new administration settled into its seats, and even with Mayor LaGuardia already beginning measures to restabilize the city, chaos still reigns in the Big Apple. From Flatbush to Astoria, from Bellestui to Riverdale, all of New York is abuzz and aflame as looters, riders, and other degenerate opportunists ransack our beloved city in what is being quickly known as the Great Crime Wave of 1937. The streets... City streets twinkle with the broken glass of storefront windows and red with the blood of innocent and guilty alike as crime threatens to completely consume the city that never sleeps. Seeking to capitalize on the anarchy, the commission headed by Lucky Luciano and Maya, Maya Lansky, along with Murder Inc. and the five families have taken this moment of weakness to make their move to corner more of the city. The New York Police Department has done its best to fight back against this mess, but out of fear of escalating the situation, the mayor told them back. Many wonder how long this can go on as the city that dances on the balcony above anarchy and hedonism. Let us hope we can deal with this. Less corruption, please. Organized crime problem. Uh, let's see what we can do. Sweep them aside. That would be good. Hall has been a thorn in the side of fair and free New Yorker democracy. Their proclivity for corruption and towards self-serving ambitions have hampered New York's pursuits of a glorious destiny as such as cancerous, corrupt, and undemocratic tumor must be excised once and for all. The society of St. Tammany shall be banned from organizing, and the main members and bosses will be put to trial by LaGuardia and his trusty ally, District Attorney Thomas Dewey. Oh, Thomas Dewey. Another watch, the LaGuardia administration shall poach the Tammany Tiger once and for all, the New Deal for New York. Seeking to build a better future for every man, woman, and child in the Big Apple, Mayor LaGuardia has begun his plan of a New Deal, influenced by ideas created years ago by his late friend Franklin Roosevelt. The New Deal for New York is centered around the three R's of relief for the unemployed, the poor, and those whose lives have been destroyed by the war, recovery of the economy to pre collapse levels and beyond, and reforms of the financial system along liberal and egalitarian lines in order to prevent such a disaster from happening again, which I read before. Along with this egalitarian welfare plan, a divisive plan beloved by millions but despised by ardent conservatives who see it as a crypto-socialism, Mayor LaGuardia has gone full head, gone head, <clears throat> Excuse me, to fulfill all the campaign promises and, and personal ambitions. These include, but aren't limited to, reforming the New York Police Department to strip it of its corruption, finally putting the nail on the Tamemini Hall, replacing patronage with a merit based civil service, modernize infrastructure, industry, transportation, and much more in order to transform New York City into the shining city on the hill that provides a safety net and an equal step for all citizens that it was meant to be. I pledge you, I pledge myself, to a new deal for New York's people. I'll have to deal with them. Deal with crime. No, oh, crap. 
as crime. Has an extra speed of crime problem. Well, I mean, that's what we're trying to do. We're doing both of these. I didn't even know we had to go that way. I'm glad I looked at that. Holy crap. Though less blatant in the criminal activities and corruptive influence along than the mob is, the Society of St. Tammany has so strong source of undemocratic activity, graft, corruption, and crime, though they've been weakened in the past. We must take steps to end their influence once and for all, lest they tear apart the very fabric of New York uh, City democracy. And though we don't have very much to build with and we don't have enough of anything, we only have like a military factory. Yeah, we got one. Seven naval dockyards. Jesus, that's a lot. That is a lot of dockyards. Nice. Now we're gonna deal with him. Oh, because if we don't do that, then he can become mayor, huh? To ma to many hall takes down the mayor. All right, well that's interesting. Clean up the city. You might as well do that one next. Get more weekly stability too. It's pretty nice. For this anti-corruption measures already in order and showing the first blossoms of good results, Mayor Lagardia has moved to expand the san sanitation effort to all aspects of New Yorker society. A new idea of cleaning up the city which will be spread as the Lagardia administration moves to cleanse and purify all aspects of New York City. Street cleaning and garbage pickup are being organized and made efficient. The sewage system is being expanded and modernized. New York Police Department anti-corruption measures are being expanded as new recruits are hired and trained in mass to better combat the organized crime problem. Anti-racist and pro-equal rights programs have been spread as LaGuardia champions African-American cause. Internal affairs divisions are even being created across the government and its offices, providing accountability and inside man into every branch of the metropolitan system, ensuring the system of checks and balances on every department in the city. With these initiatives and more, New York City shall be made the greatest city on earth once again. Bright lights and distracting signs. With the violence rapidly overwhelming the rest of the Union, we have managed to stay mostly safe. However, this does not help the morale of the people. With many feeling we have abandoned our fellow Americans, even those who have no love for the political radicals that seem to ever see its prominence, are rapidly suffering from defeatism and apathy. Some see our cities of pride, something that will be seized by whichever faction gains enough ground beyond our defenses, while we cannot completely squash this fear. We could offer a distraction if we were to push funding towards opening back up to many of the entertainment sites. Within the city, we could direct all of that fear into something creative. Support this idea of a specifically named Broadway in the theater district, suggesting that this time of fear and contempt is a perfect atmosphere for playwrights to flourish. Keep them happy if nothing else. Pretty much. Pretty much. We definitely gonna need that one. Oh, rhyme. There you go. Maybe get some more max entrenchment next. Fusion ticket. How's the rest of the world doing? The car is not doing great. The American Union State looks like it's doing okay. Actually, who's uh? Oh, huh. Hiram Johnson, huh? Social Democrat. Russia led by Mal Maklakov. Also, apparently, Ukraine is free. Other plays, or not Ukraine, but Crimea? That looks, looks really awesome. Sounds like a lot of fun to actually play as well. Sharia law. Water shortage, that's not good. Ottomans, Persians, sweep them aside. Clean up the god dang city. There we go, looking pretty good so far. The federal government's not having a good time, but yeah, they'll, they'll be alright. I'm not too worried about them. I uh, would like to get to partial mobilization as well, but is there anything we can do about uh, this? I prefer to get that many. Because this costs actually less command power. Uh, get more daily army XP gain. Defense will probably need more defense, but give us more daily army XP first. That's the only thing that matters to me right now, is army XP. And better artillery. A modern Tower of Babel, and a move aimed to both revive our sluggish economy through job creation and the opening of new business offices, and to bring prestige and attention to a newly independent nation. The municipal government, under the supervision of LaGuardia, finally decided to revive the stalled 1931 plan to build the largest skyscraper on Earth. Deviating from the original plans drawn up by the Shree, Lamb and Harmon Company in order to decorate the entire facade of the building in Art Deco, New York's premier art style, ornamentation, and designs that were first openly supposed to cover the interior. The newly redesigned Empire State Building, named after our own Empire State, is to finally have its grand opening. Just after 13 months of construction fueled by a hungry and idle construction co industry, this 102-story monolith now stands as a monument to New York's greatest culture, greatness, culture, ability to turn a nation as we, one of the smallest nations on the planet, construct the tallest structure ever built by mankind. This achievement has been hailed as one of the greatest feats of engineering in history, providing untold prestige and to praise to our small but mighty now independent Big Apple. With mere steel and cement, we shall dare to scrape the very heavens as we climb towards the future and beyond. Democratic unity. 
Mayor Lagarde made New York City history as the first Italian mayor, running on his fusion ticket. A big tent unity coalition composed of his main base within the Republican Party, as well as various elements from across the spectrum that came together in order to preserve New York City democracy. Though this fusion ticket is fractured and shrunk, Lagarde still enjoys the respect and support of many elements that were once part of his coalition, as well as other like-minded representatives from across New York City's political scene. With this in mind, it should be no issue for Lagarde administration to drum up support and camaraderie between like-minded parties and groups within the stabilized political stage of the city. Together we shall build a better, more free city for all to enjoy, while those opposed to us shall be relegated to a tiny, ineffectual minority. The fickle pickle of crime. The dark underbelly of the Big Apple can be a devious and abhorrent place, earning our shining city the fitting nickname of Gotham in the times of English and Dutch colonialism. From organized crime to petty theft, crime runs amok in these dark streets in all forms, however. Amid the rapes and random killings, the carjackings and robberies, there exists a tiny group of monsters that truly know no equal. One of these base creatures is a Hungarian immigrant, Bella Kiss. But perhaps immigrant is not the most fitting term. Kiss has been on the run for decades, a serial killer with few equals responsible for the deaths of at least 23 women and a man. Or is it at least 24 women as of today? Long trying to hide away from the, within the hustle and bustle of the city that never sleeps and never pays attention. Kiss tried to sweep past under a rug, faking his own death and immigrating to America before finding work as a janitor at various employers around the city, never staying in one place for too long as to always hide its increasingly infamous face, however. It would seem that plan had finally failed once again, preparing the large metal drum filled with brine, solution, and gasoline. Kiss was well underway with his preferred and signature method of body disposal. He had already drained her body of all fluids, sampling them all along the way as he practiced his demented form of vampirism. Lowering the body of his strangled and then blood-drained victim into the vat, his hands were occupied when the police finally burst in, having picked up local tips from the bystanders that recognized his face both at the janitorial job and once when getting off the subway in Manhattan. The local cops were able to track Kiss down to this locale, a small apartment complex in Staten Island. Pointing their M1917s and browning high points at him, the officers demanded that he drop the girl and put his hands in the air, but as a madman reached for the knife. Two of the officers on the scene opened fire, kisses lunging frame, striking him three times in the chest and once in the head, finally ending the story of the sadistic freak. The victim was identified as a local woman, with no family, no close friends or neighbors, his preferred type of prey, and their body has been donated to medical science as a result, along with the killers. Detectives familiar with the case noted that Kiss had long been demented, having a history of being interested in the cult, being cheated on and abandoned by two, one of his two ex-wives, and having an incestuous relationship against his will as a child, which all could have led to his downfall and to perversion. Whatever the circumstances, it would seem that finally, after running from Hungary to Serbia to God knows where else before he landed here, the violent and sadistic odyssey of Bella Kiss had finally come to an end. A fitting end for the vampiristic and animalistic deviant. Wow. I feel like this is like TNO at this point. Just so much reading, which is not bad, but still. We scraped the sky. Yay! We did something! Uh, wow. Civil War's moving fast. Huey Long. I, he, I did have Huey Long win the presidency, but still. Building a navy. Fought for America. Push against longest. Oh, they sold lots while pushing against them. Of course, these guys are not fighting each other. So, CSA and American Union are not killing each other. So, there's that. Reformist Republicanism, huh? Oh, political parties. <clears throat> the What is this? The Nordic League? What the heck is that? I've played as New England before. I don't ever remember seeing this, though. I gotta play. Oh, here it is. Radical victory. Black foreign hordes help the clan. Southern purity. Oh my goodness. Neo aristocracy. Positive. Ooh. Birth control league. Wow. Sterilizes mass degenerate masses. I know who I want to play as next. <laughs> I formed the Civil Service and the NPD. NYPD? Yeah, that one. Seeking to replace a patronage system that has long been rife with corruption and ineptitude, as well as seeking to cleanse the corruption and rife poli police department, Mayor Lagarde has moved towards uh, to fulfill his campaign promises to reform the civil service and the NYPD, shifting towards a mayor based civil service funded, trained, and overseen by the state, while also moving to reorganize the NYPD to cut down corruption, nepotism, racism, and political abuse. Or police abuse. Lagarde hopes to eliminate crime and graft within the metropolitan bureaucracy in all departments while expanding jobs and further meeting the administrative and security needs of the state. While well, public works programs reads as. In order to kickstart the local economy while also combating the various vicious specter that is mass unemployment, Mayor Lagarde has passed an initiative that will provide numerous public works jobs for hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers. This new public works program will have the, these previously jobless lots now provide their manpower and skills in numerous efforts regarding municipal expansion, from the creation of new housing blocks and subway tunnels to new roadways and even public art installations. 
no matter what the task. We'll provide the men with supplies, and in turn, these men shall be paid for their services, hopefully breathing life back in our struggling economy, but the Long Island Siege. Since their independence a short time ago, thanks to the hard-working men of the intrepid boys in blue, New York City has remained a small, if not the only, bastion of order and stability left along the eastern seaboard. While it's been hard to maintain the peace, the boys have been so far been able to keep the scum that thrive on chaos in check, at least within the city itself. Of course, New York is only part of, a small part of our total, total territory, as the rest of the Long Island left the Union along with the city prosper. The decision was, it seems, not the most popular outside the five boroughs. While hardly being federal sympathizers, those who inhabit Long Island, especially the elite families such as the Rockefellers and Vanderbilts, have seemingly taken matters in their own hands. Using the chaos and various guerrilla fighters that dot Long Island outside of the city as an excuse, various private militias have been raised, overwhelming bankroll, overwhelmingly bankrolled by the elites, officially only existed to restore order while the NYPD has had their hands full of the city. These militias have indeed begun to restore order, but not that order that flows from Mayor LaGuardia's government. These militias establish their own order, their own law and governments in some cases, and clear defiance of Mayor's authority. Well, that's crap. Now, while not taking a direct stand against the city itself, these militias begin to actively halt shipments from the rest of the island to the city itself. With the vast majority of these shipments being food, and with Long Island being the sole place we can grow our own crops, the action on the mayor's part has been forced. In order to avoid a firefight and risk aligning a civil war within the context of a larger civil war, the mayor's authorized the NYPD to infiltrate these militias and take them down from the inside, as well as igniting internal conflicts. The plan is that once the militias are sufficiently whittled down, the NYPD can mop them up and restore true order to Long Island. This plan will take a bit of planning, as expected to take a few months. In the meantime, rationing has been implemented within the city in order to avoid starvation as these brave boys in blue deal with the siege that has been laid before us. Be quick, boys, I miss the Coney dogs already. Masked morons, as the police of the city wage their seemingly endless war on crime, few concerned citizens have begun to take matters in their own hands. A small but visible rise in vigilante acts has caused some concern among the higher-ups within the police department and among the citizenry as well, but this has not stopped these masked fools from interfering with the, from, with the law. One such fool running around in bright red, red skin-tight suits and occasionally screaming goes by the name Daredevil is notable for being blind and claiming to have powers of echolocation and radar sense. Basically just amounting to a blind guy running around yelling at criminals, this so-called superhero has been known to work alone, mostly but has also been spotted working with another one of these masked freaks called the Spider-Man. This red and blue adorned dweeb is heavily active around the Queens area and is known to be used a series of ropes and climbing gear to crawl up walls like a spider or to snarl as criminal prey, but these freaks are not alone, for many others seem to be rising to compete with them, such as a depressed man running around northern New Jersey in Staten Island. In a bat costume, the old doctor professing to be a master magician or the various so-called genius inventors like the Midtown engineer that dons red and gold tin can suit. There's even a group of these nutjobs working together based out of Upper Manhattan, calling themselves the Watchmen who seem to do more damage than they do good. However, these foolish dreamers have only really managed to get themselves hurt and the city angry with local newspaper mogul J.J. Jameson calling them all crooks and masked morons despite these complaints. They still claim to have stomped some or stopped some nebulous and unknown crimes we've never heard of against Max and mysterious supervillains that have no evidence of existing. Perhaps these hopeful heroes are just people with an overactive imagination, but maybe, just maybe, there might be something more to it. Cape Crusaders, in my city, you've got to be kidding me. And I'm still trying to finish up Democratic Unity, which is fine, and of course still need to reform the Civil Service, which is fine as well, as we're... Slowly watching, well, America crumble even further into killing itself. But, you know, what else is new? I'll grab that one, too. We can use more army XP, can't we? Oh, yes, we can. Democratic unity, though, is very nice to have. The car's got to capitulate. Louisville's going to have to die. Oh, they actually took Indianapolis. And Cincinnati. That's actually really good for them. Good for you guys. I see they never sleeps. With the great fanfare and celebration of the grand expansion of that New York City subway was unveiled today with the opening of uh, the independent subway system, ISS. The project... <clears throat> Planning for such a system predates the Civil War, but the city's only gathered enough recent capital recently. The crisscrossing railroads now, or rails now, cover huge portions of the city. What is most unique about the ISS is that it runs on a 24-hour circle or cycle. With the introduction of never-ending rail system, life or seems to be bustling throughout the city at any time of the day. As I said, to some say, it's the most efficient subway system in the world, outpacing older systems such as the London Metropolitan and the Istanbul Tunnel. Only time will tell what kind of benefits the never-ceasing railway will have on the city. But regardless of what this will be, a good propaganda measure. A 12-hour subway? Preposterous. Could grab some more naval XP, but, eh. We could honestly probably use it for other stuff like partial mobilization. And, of course, like I said earlier, we'll do public works program. And then break free from the banks. That'd be pretty nice. Create the pro works project administration. We need public works programs. Oh, so that one. And then we can do that one. Oh, that would be bad. Black assumption goes down. Max factory in state, more research speed. That's not bad. Work products administration with modernize and expand infrastructure. Oh, that's not bad. It's kind of cool. How's the rest of the world doing? Oh. Ooh, that sucks for you guys. 
Well, we have the Don Republic now. Afrikan Bogowski? Bogowski. Von Potovitz, push. Huh. So we can battle nice. Await the Fatherland's call. A lot of claims. Holy crap. Raise Russia. Commonwealth of Independent Nations. A Kaiser to call her own. Whoa. Das Russische Reich. Mexico Masariat. Holy crap. We are coming home. Assyria. Cool. Wait, what is this one? I don't think I've seen this one before. Rudiger von der Goetz. Baltic Brotherhood. Balt and Deutsche Orden. Well, that's really cool. Maybe we should play them again. I don't know if I actually played them. That's really cool. Wir glauben, wir kämpfen, wir siegen. And now we have the state. Going after the Tumemi, Tumemi Tiger. In order to put the corrupt Tumemi Tiger of, well, Tiger Tumemi Hall out of his misery once and for all, Mayor Freyla H. Lagarde has launched a full scale investigation into the Society of St. Tumemi and their numerous misdeeds. Facing corruption, felonious charges in a list too long to fully detail, the specially assembled team of prosecutors has their sights set on directly on the heart of Tumemi Tiger, seeking to end this corrupt monstrosity's reign of terror finally. Let's embark. <clears throat> And take down this rotten structure so that New York society can finally breathe again. We'll poach a tiger once for all. Oh, that's good. Break free from the banks. I do want to do that one. But create the Works Administration, or Projects Administration. Savage so work, Works Projects Administration of New York, Mayor Lagarde has created a program aimed at employing the unemployed masses in order to build and repair the infrastructure and public amenities of the city. From roads and subways to parks and museums, all of New York City shall be modernized and made new upon the backs of our own dedicated but down on the luck citizenry. With these jobs, they should be tossed back into the economy as productive members while also modernizing your city in the process. Which would be pretty good. Keep building. Uh, actually, there you go. Balance it out a little more. So what are the factions like now? Ooh, Reichspact? A lot of Reichspact. Dona Edribund. Illyria. Hungary has its unique focus tree, right? Yeah. Yeah, even Kazrak doesn't have their own unique hungry focus tree, but just kinda sucks, but whatever. Entente, Entente. Southern Chinese group. Alright. What is the Merkulov clique? Japan being Japanese again, but that's pretty normal. Group machine tools. Oh, everything I've done, huh? That's nice. Um the shining Shining Beacon City. That'd be pretty good to do. <clears throat> the God is Fireside Chats. Oh, that's not bad. De a lot of defense against enemy countries. More building slots. Modern is expanded infrastructure. Further in the initial infrastructure work seated by the WPA, Mayor Lagarde has authorized a specific initiative aimed at f fully modernizing the infrastructure of the city. With new bridges, new highways, new parkways, new subway tunnels, and new rail yards, new docks, and more, New York City should be made the best connected city on Earth. Transmir, huh? Merkulov. Okay. Not bad. They're international, huh? Third man, why are these guys doing so well right now? Lightning Joe Doctrine, I guess. Really good artillery. More manpower, lots of manpower. Oh, not that much manpower. These guys are just holding out. Wow. The feds don't have a lot of divisions, neither do PSA. Red Flood, if you want to put that, please go ahead. The fate of Tumeni Hall. In just a few short weeks, the landmark case is finally done, and as the dust clears, the aftermath can finally be witnessed. The Society of St. Tumeni Hall has fallen. Uh, the spe special prosecutor team was able to find enough evidence of finally bringing Tumeni Hall down, leaving them stripped of their special status and political affiliations, with, while more than half of their original members now sit within a jail cell. The task to repair this now pro-Irish and pro-democratic group falls to the young Carmine de Sapio and his partner J. Raymond Jones, who seek 
To wash away Temeni's old images, he transforms it into a pro arch conservative lobby group, with the Democratic Party resuming its normal functions now clear of Temeni's influence. New York democracy and society is finally free from such blatant corruption, and although our task in cleaning up the city will never end, at least one more black scene has finally been scrubbed out. Let us hope De Sapio and Jones can lead the defanged organization to less criminal aspirations. The target finally defanged into Claude. Great. Great, 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 great. On the status of independent sports leagues. With the decision to remain separate from the new America, the question about what to do with their sports leagues has now arisen. Now, before the collapse, well, teams from across America competed against each other after being divided into regional conferences. But the Second American Civil War brought all that to an end. But with the return of normalcy and peace, perhaps now it's time to reunify the leagues. Though our borders and nations would, of course, stay separate, we could allow our teams to compete against the teams of the new America, like they once so did frequently, bringing joy to all Americans regardless of borders. However, die-hard New York Patriots oppose this ideal, found that it would achieve in our newly cemented identity as an independent state. What should we do? Together, the league shall entertain the mass of this fractured America. New York and our teams need no other false Americans. I, thought, I always thought I always thought the House should win. Seeking to gain public support while raising awareness for his anti-crime crusade, Mayor LaGuardia recently hit headlines by rampaging across the city with a pack of loyal strongmen taking the initiative after his recent anti-gambling law passed by removing, smashing, and trashing every slot scheme and other gambling machines he could find. Going down Broadway Street, raiding storefront by storefront by other illegal merchandise, LaGuardia and his men amassed a pile of hundreds of illegal machines, smashing them and beating them up as they piled them up. After posing atop the pile of broken slot machines for pictures of the local newspaper, LaGuardia's men, along with the gathered mass supporters and volunteers, loaded all the machines up to the trucks and brought them down the New York Harbor. There, LaGuardia did the honors of throwing the first of the machines into the sea before the rest of the posse took part. Reading the city of their corruptive and sinful influence, LaGuardia smashes gambling machines in the streets as part of his anti-gambling initiative, takes them all and dumps them into the harbor. There should be no gambling or predatory vice in LaGuardia's New York. And today at the opera. Perhaps the funniest men in all of New York, and perhaps a wider America, the fem famous and infamous Mox Brothers, has set to release their newest film, titled A Day in the Races. This follows up to the immensely popular A Night at the Opera in Duck Soup, as one of the most highly anticipated pieces of entertainment to release since the battle for New York. The Marx Brothers, composed of Jewish-Americans vaudeville stars Chico, Harpo, and Groucho, and their less stardom-loving brothers Guomo, Ogumo, and Le Zeppo, the group are children of Minnie Marx, herself a vaudeville star and sister to the famous comic. Al Sheen. They have risen to be some of the most popular and beloved entertainers in all of New York City and in the newest picture. The group parodies a fa failing sanitarium, which is saved by the wild Hugo Hackenbush, led by Groucho Marx, who is a veter veterinarian masquerading as a medical doctor in order to save the failing or the nuthouse. Filled with laughs, gas, stunts, acrobatics, satire, and just downright old fashioned humor, a day at the opera is sure to be yet another smash success for the Marx brothers. And despite their alleged social sympathies and Jewish background, these brothers have once again risen to the top of the Big Apple. If I hold you any closer, I'll be back. I'll be in back of you. Break through the, from the banks. Key another campaign promise of Mayor Lagardia was to restore financial health and to break free from the control of corrupt banker class. For too long, capitalist barons and bank magnates have dominated the financial system of New York City, especially around Wall Street. In order to break this control, Lagardia's administration has launched a full-scale attack on New York City's banking structure, strong arming these merchants of misery to lower interest rates. Expand credit and loan availability, and other acts of better business in order to stop these oppressive capitalists and strangling the lowest classes of the city ever again. <clears throat> nice. <coughs> oh, we can't do that. What do we have over here? Anything here? Get more daily army speed gain. Insurance and speed, division defense. Um, that's a lot of extra stuff every day. Oh, Ryan, I mean, we do want more defense. We will definitely need more defense. So, on the subject of LaGuardia's party. Mayor LaGuardia ran both in 33, and in the recent snap elections on the fusion ticket, a temporary expansion into a big-tent coalition of liberals, anti tamani conservatives, progressives, and moderate anti-socialists and socialists all united in their shared interest to preserve New York City as a bastion of freedom, liberty, and fair justice that has always strived to be. However, much time has passed, and New York City is stabilized, leading to many to call into question if the fusion ticket is still needed. It is up to the mayor of LaGuardia to face the facts with so many party members leaving already to go back to the original parties, or to form new ones, or should he attempt to hold together this dying coalition. Keep the coalition fusion ticket? Reform them. We have more, no, no needs. Oh, I'll just become the Republicans. Whatever. Reform party, huh? Market libs. Modernize, expand infrastructure. Very nice. Better supply system is nice, but we only have two divisions. It's not like it really matters too much. And these both are the Revolutionary Continental Army, which is not bad, but... We don't have anything but guns. Don't. Oh, there goes a the car. They don't really think it's expected of us to really win the war against uh, these guys. Actually, you're not fighting these guys at all. No wonder you're doing so well. 
Time to take down those goddamn bankers. Shining at Beacon City. Under the guidance of Mayor of the Guardian and his political allies, New York has are transformed into the prodigal shining city upon the hill. Our city is a liberal beacon for all the world to behold, and here on our miniature archipelago, we stand as an inspiration for all to witness and hope to aspire to. Our factories come to life without end. Our people. Our fed clothed them with jobs. Our docks are filled with trade ships and flying flags of every nation. And the culture of New York thrives like never before. Our city is a paradise on earth, and under Mayor LaGuardia, we may, may we continue to shine for eternity and repairing the garden. Madison Square Garden, frequently called MSG or just a garden, is the greatest sports arena in, all, in America, and perhaps the world. Currently the third building to bear the name, the current garden was built in 1925 and served us as a home of New York Rangers ice hockey team and the New York Knicks baseball team for years, or basketball team for years, my apologies. However, the garden, along with other great ventures like Yankee Stadium, were damaged during the battle for New York, and as such, they've been uh, closed awaiting repairs. Using funding sourced from our new economic boon, Mayor Lagardi has authorized local contractors to repair these great stadiums so that New Yorkers can once again enjoy professional sports in the greatest arena on Earth. As the stadiums are repaired, new leagues are to be organized and new teams are to be made for all locally popular sports like hockey, baseball, and basketball so that the next regular season can go off without a hitch. Praise be the workers or the world's most famous arena. What they do hearings, utilizing the famous and skilled uh, special prosecutor Thomas E. Dewey along with a legal crack team. Mayor Lagardi has launched what is being called the Dewey Hewings. Hearings into an attempt to expose and eradicate organized crime within the Big Apple once and for all. Singling out Lucky Luciano and his National Crime Syndicate along with uh, the five families under his control. The prosecution has all evidence in the world they need to deal with a major blow to mobs or activity within New York City. With the chaos of the battle for New York and our independence revealing uh, much of their more shady dealings, luckily for us, their numbers were not as unified as it first seemed, and numerous informants and turncoats such as Joseph Alachi have come forward, making our case stronger. However, much of the jury could easily be paid off by the mob, so we must remain vigilant as we go after these kings of crime. After weeks of Tron debate, with interesting tidbits leaked from both Tammany Hall and uh, parts of the NYPD have been corrupted by this criminal syndicate, it's finally found out that... Guilty? Through intimidation and bribery, the mob gets off with a slap on the wrist? Guilty. The Battle of the Bronx expands. Existing since 1911, the sports rivalry between the Bronx's two largest colleges, Manhattan College and Fordham University, has been one of the few things to persist through our recent turmoil, providing a brief respite and distraction from the heck engulfing wider America with peace and stability returning to the city. This rivalry, starting in American basketball and growing to become a multi-sport feud, has reignited the love of competitive sports in the Bronx, and the story rivalry has now begun to expand as other colleges get on in the actions new leagues and conferences are made within our newly independent state. With the Jaspers and Rams leading the charge, normalcy has begun to return to New York City, and the people sigh with relief as New York's finest aspirants. Battle out in the ring on the court, expiring others to do the same across the Big Apple. Let's go, Jaspers. Bankers, man. Bankers. Guatemala? Once these guys kill each other off, these guys might really have some serious issues. But Chicago's about to fall. Trans by call, the People's Socialist Republic? Militant godless. Holy crap. Guys are ridiculous. There's so much content. Span Central Park. Rising star of the New Democrats. The too many tigers have been slain with other fall new age of the Democratic Party has begun. For Adam Clyde or Clayton, Adam Clayton Powell Jr. has slowly clawed his way up to the, be the new face of the New York Democratic Party, following the landmark case that caused the collapse of the Tammany Hall political machine. A Baptist pastor and political from Harlem, Powell is the first African New Yorker to rise to such a height within the confines of a non-radical city politics, and as such he carries much of the black vote with him. Butting heads with his political rival, the anti tamani champion of the conservative Democrats, Al Smith, Powell has faced fierce competition on his climb through... Though he's a long way to go before he can rally enough support behind him to win any sort of major election, Powell shall stand or shall fight for what he believes is right to, as he seeks to transform the once corrupted Democratic Party into a liberal haven of pious Christians and fair capitalism. Who knows, maybe he'll be mayor one day. We will watch his rise with great interest. Um, expand such a park in the gardens. A personal pet project of the mayor, a new initiative has begun to expand, renovate, and restore the various gardens and natural venues of the city. From Van Cortland and Central Park to the Brooklyn Botanical Gardens, all venues will be funded and made new anew with the funding from the LaGuardia administration. For those, or for these, are our only local greeneries, and as such, they must be protected and preserved. Now, we've ignored all this other stuff, too. So, which means we'll get this stuff in the next episode, probably, as well. Funds from the Federal Reserve. Mm. Big miracles in the Big Apple. Friends in high places. City under siege. Protecting New York City. We'll see about that. The Johnson. Talking about LBJ here. Armor trains and huh, 
New York City seems kind of crazy, but sounds like fun. Fun to me. Let's grab the naval guy, maybe. Uh, fate of the Christian Front. I found in 1935 as a resort of France, uh, Father, Father Charles Coughlin's call for a crusade against anti Christian forces of the Red Revolution. The Christian Front has become New York City's largest, most predominant, longest organization. Uh, uh, although Coughlin himself denies having direct ties with the group, headed by entrepreneur and self made ANI inspired politician Generoso Pope, Protestant fundamentalist and rabid anti semi Joe McWilliams of Brooklyn based Bishop Thomas Edmund Moley, the front is highly supportive of the NYPD and is alleged to have helped the boys in blue during the initial cleanup of following the Battle of New York. Besides long in the NYPD, the front is incredibly linked to ooh, and perhaps even part of the Temeni machine due to Pope's efforts, though both the front and the Temeni deny this, saying the relationship doesn't go past vocal support. Also, supporting tacit ties to the front is Fred Trump, who quietly supporters, supports the movement while simultaneously slandering it in public for its cooperation with Catholics. Since the beginning of our independence a long time, a short time ago, these anti-Semitic crusaders have stepped up their attempts to rid of the big apple of Judeo-Syndicalist infiltration, mostly by targeting Jewish business owners with boycotts, but reports of direct assaults on Jews by members of the front have been reported. With this being the case, a group of private citizens from all walks of life have reached out to the government in secret and have requested we deal with the front, offering what they call darning evidence of the front's crimes. This group wishes to see the front gone for good. With this group, plus the rising reports of attacks in other groups, uh, of such action from the front's membership, they can no longer be ignored. Despite this, the government is split on how to deal with the front, and thus few options are open for us to consider. Warn them, but let them continue to operate. We must uphold our principles no matter the case. Ban the organization at once. Ban the organization immediately in rear its leadership. I mean, it's only five here, bros. Yeah, we'll go that one right now. Weekly stability gain goes up by 1%. Not bad. I thought we were supposed to get even more weekly stability. The Schnoza. Schnozola. The Kalani King of the Lower East Side with a gravely, instantly recognizable voice to match, Jimmy Durant, is one of the most famous comics in America. Along with the sidekick, Sonny King, Durant and his comedy troupe has been entertaining New Yorkers for decades with his distinctly large nose and even large sense of humor. Nickname, the Schnozola. After his trademark nose, Durant rose from a poor Italian Catholic background, being born to immigrants from Salerno, to being one of the most influential and affluent comedians and entertainers to ever make a joke or do a vaudeville act on the stage of the Big Apple. Hosting variety shows with famous New York stars like Frank, Frank Sinatra, the Marx Brothers, Dean Martin, Moore, Durant is determined to help New York City keep on laughing through the thick and thin as he stabilizes once again, keeping up to his motto to make just one, make one someone happy. Ombriago. He got one fat schnoz. 43% still not bad. The Mafia. MP NYC, Maximus Party. Not quite Quentin Roosevelt, but Cowboy Struts in Manhattan. With all the hubbub and drama the city produces, sometimes just not just to take a moment to slow down and experience all this urban paradise can truly showcase and provide. But some unique sites the city offers may not be the prettiest. From the masses of homeless to the small alleys of drug addicts and criminals, not all sites within our fair cities are attractive, but one certainly is. Times Square and the surrounding blocks have been a buzz in recent weeks. With a sudden appearance of the one they call the Naked Cowboy, this buff rider without a horse apparently parades around Times Square in nothing but his underwear and a 10 gallon hat while playing guitar, sit playing songs, singing, and entertaining passerbys in a strange but welcoming act of music and physical showboating. Though his true identity is yet to be revealed, he's become a beloved if embarrassing fixture of this Times Square scene. A busy intersection constantly filled with pedestrians, performers, entertainers, and other attention seekers, and even has announced an album of his songs and shanties is on the way. Many can't wait to see how, the, the, what this Naked Cowboy can do, while others are simply disgusted as indecency. Whether he does this in protest or simply in jest, it's not known, though when private, it's said to be seen as a supporter of Trump's reform party, and is a performance artist, as opposed to a nutted loon. What is known, however, is that the naked cowboy, uh, despite his apparent, though dubious southern origins, is as New York as they come. What a strange, strange band. Because that type of truck, or that band's been, you know, very 1940s, or 30s-esque, I guess you could say. But my god, he's got a nipple. I'll leave four for Lady Justice. In order to both secure his own political agenda as well as gain allies and future favors, Mayor Lagarde has gone ahead and made history again by appointing some of the first black and w black and women justices to the bench. Among them are Rosalie Whitney, Herbert O'Brien, Jane Bolden, and Lagarde's close ally Hubert Thomas Delaney. These stepped along with his long-term and loud-spoken support of civil rights, egalitarian principles across races, and freedom of religion. The little flower has proven to be a true man of the people. Now Mayor Lagarde, his cabinet, and his close friends and allies like Henry Morgenthau Jr., Robert Moses, and Thomas Dewey. To have persevered to bring liberty and justice to all in the Big Apple and beyond. May these impartial and wise guardians of justice lead our nation to great heights. We'll see about that. The guard is our side chats. In order to reach, in each, reach each and every soul within his city, Mayor Lagarde has begun a weekly radio program in which he dresses his fellow New Yorkers, discussing recent events and news as well as the direction and future plans of this administration in the city at large, broadcasting to every radio in the nation, as well as the odd TV and the richer homes. Mayor Lagarde will be sitting fireside with a cigar and brandy each week, warming the hearts and easing the minds of all New Yorkers for a time to come.
And for the years to come, really. Not bad. Follow Detroit. Nice. Um, the Belmont Island situation. Breaking news bulletin has been posted. Citywide, a small group of environmentalists and anti-war activists have been sailed out under the tiny Belmont Island. An artificial island roughly 100 by 200 or 30 by 50, 60 meters in size built in the 1980s during underwater tunnel construction in the Bay of Manhattan and declared their own independent state. Citing their reasons being an act of protest in response to the Second American Civil War, these beatniks have largely just been playing music, singing, drinking, smoking, and all around enjoying themselves as they protest in the name of American peace. However, these swells lack any long-term source of food or even fresh water, not to mention any other am amenities on that tiny strip of man-made rock. The police department has already been informed and have moved to surround Manhattan's smallest island with patrol craft and police boats in order to monitor the situation. All the mayor must do now is whether to decide to move in and forcibly remove these hippies from Belmont Island or should we simply sit back and let these animals realize the mess they're in. Get these yelling morons off my island. Let them howl into the wind. They'll have to, so they'll have to leave sometime. Let them leave sometime. It's fine. Where can they go? Nowhere. E. Trump and Sons. What is E. Trump? I don't know. We'll go with E. Trump, I guess. There you go. Fireside chats, huh? So that part of the focus is done. Is there anything else down here? No. Uh, the Christian Front takes command. Eventually, we'll get there. So we have these three left to do. Protecting New York City. But if Berlin intervene in the Civil War, we could. Oh, we can't. Currently, the ruling party is not social liberals. Oh. Protecting New York City. We're in a vulnerable position. There's no denying it. The Syndicalists could easily use us as a beachhead for the invasion of the Federalists, or the legitimate Americans could use us as a tool to claim the mantle of the free America for themselves. We should have a foreign power to help with the defense of New York City, even if only temporarily, to ensure our hard sovereignty survives. Which is probably a really good idea. Look at Central America. So we got a... Oh, with these bit again. Oh. Counter-revolution in Chile? Alright. It's the only three research slots, which does kind of suck, but whatever. And city under siege. Our beloved Big Apple's under siege. Uh, though we have entered into an uneasy ceasefire, the radical forces of the combined syndicates and the stalwart forces of the Federalists uh, both eye up our metropolis with hungry eyes. Meanwhile, the Canadians and the New Englanders look to us with deep intent, while foreign forces already buy for subservience. This cannot be allowed to stand. We must rally the meager military forces under command in order to formalize a new army to defend our proud New York. Well, let's see what we can do. Of course, no guarantees, but it's only 1938 still. The American Union State has done great. Once Chicago's gone, it's pretty much over. Milwaukee, Chicago, huh? It's very weird that Milwaukee's so close to Chicago. Repairing New York's Cathedral. St. Patrick's Cathedral is the heart of the Catholic faith in New York and stands the largest Gothic uh, revival cathedral in all of the city, or in North America, really. First founded as down in the 1850s by the James Rennick Jr. and dedicated in 1879, as well as in 1910 when it first was consecrated, this massive house of worship was built in order to fulfill the spiritual needs of the city's exponentially growing population of Catholics, mostly flooding in from Ireland and Italy. Replacing the older St. Patrick's Old Cathedral, now called St. Michael's Russian Catholic Church of the Byzantine Rite, as the main seat of the Diocese of New York, the newer St. Patrick's Cathedral is a massive, twin-spired Gothic cathedral smack dab in the center of Fifth Avenue, and stands as the seat of the Archbishop of New York. But this hallowed place lies dormant and wounded, for radicals set it ablaze during the Battle of New York. Those not known to the perpetrators were cynicalists, extremists, Protestant fanatics, or simply rogue gangsters, although all sides point fingers at each other. Luckily, the cathedral is not reduced to sinners. Both rifle top, right tower, roof, eastern marble support columns, parts of the Lady Chapel, and some parts of the precious stained glass windows were all heavily damaged, and the cathedral has sat condemned and closed since while uh, the rest of the city slowly stabilized. With peace returning to our streets, the massive Catholic population of New York City, numbering over a million souls, has loudly demanded that the cathedral be prepared no matter and no matter what our views may be on Catholicism. We are in no position to piss off such a massive sector of the population as such. Mayor LaGuardia has raised funds for the renovation and repair of the church, which is to be headed by the George A. Fuller Company, holding a public gala to entice political or potential donors, while also asking par local parishioners for anything they could contribute. In addition to this, the cathedral has been given a small detachment of New York uh, Police Department officers and volunteers from the ancient order of Hibernarians, 
Hibernians and stand guard round the clock to ensure that nothing like this ever happens again. The city is a city of the free, and that includes freedom of religion. All wounds heal with faith and time. Oh, there goes Chicago, receding Central Park, with its part of its being turned into a temporary airstrip, <clears throat> a triage hospital, and a refugee camp during the war. Central Park, the nation's largest park and one of the biggest strips of man-made greenery in the world, has been seen better days. With much of the park in ruins, littered with the craters of artillery fire and dropped bombs, littered with splintered wood and single singed leaves, and awash with trash and debris left over from the military installation, something must be done in order to revitalize the green heart of Manhattan. Taking funds from the city council's despot depository fund, Mayor Lagarde has authorized a complete regreening effort for not only Central Park, but all of the parks and gardens within the city. From Van Cortlandt Park to the Highland, or High Line, every inch of park space shall be receded and revitalized so that the entire city may be made verdant once more. We shall see new life in the slice of New York Eden. Local libations. Celebrate the end of the conflict within the Big Apple while catching in on the post-war boom. Local breweries have begun to pop or reopen across the boroughs by the dozens. Most prominent and successful of these breweries are the long-established Brooklyn Brewery and Bronx Ale House, who have begun brewing beer, ale, ciders, pop, soda pop, and more for the people of New York. Ever innovating, these major breweries have also begun to make deals with the creameries and daily dairy farms. Out on Long Island, upstate in order to secure milk and dairy products needed to produce mil malts, milkshakes, and other sugary treats in addition to the intoxicating breweries. This industry having such an explosive, revival has led to a boom within the city's bar scene as well. The city's nightlife is alive like never before, with major clubs like the Union Club, Cotton Club, Copacabana, and others all being more popular than ever, while smaller bars out in the boroughs outside Manhattan, such as a quaint Irish pub in the Bronx called An Bel Boch, have become hotspots practically overnight growing exponentially, popular by selling the new brews of these expanding breweries. These industries, though detested by prohibition advocates, are beloved by and large by the overwhelming masses of our state. So let the good times roll as New York's veins and souls once again fill with the amber ambrosia all brewed locally here in the Big Apple. Pour one out for the one to be lost and pour a second one for me. And let's finish with the city that never sleeps. We're the city that never sleeps. The greatest metropolis on this planet, or at least we used to be. Admittedly, our fine city has fallen on hard times and harder budgets, limping along with a struggling economy and a war-ravaged landscape. It's time for the city that never sleeps to stir once again, for this giant must awaken and reclaim its legacy as the best city on Earth. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we can see see what else uh, New York City has in store for us and Mayor LaGuardia. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.